Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in so long, but don't worry, I filmed three brownstone tours, so those will be coming out in the next weeks. In this video, I'm gonna be doing my, I feel like, semi-annual tiny New York City apartment tour. It's the summer season, it's the busy rental season, so I wanted to show you guys some options. Later on in the video, I'm going to be showing you my one minute skincare routine as this video is sponsored by Tula, and I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite products I've been using for the past couple of months. I toured a couple more apartments than I expected to, so this is the first video of the Tiny Apartment Tours, and don't forget to subscribe so you can see the next part. Do you feel like you're having deja vu? I know I am. We are in Midtown East in the Grand Central area. I usually like to hide some of the apartments so I can kind of like reveal it to you guys. You know, this is a show, I gotta give you some suspense. But I can't really do that in this because this is the entire apartment. This may look a little bit familiar because this is the same landlord as the 70 square foot apartment I showed you guys. I want to say two years ago. This building does have a full-time doorman. It also has two elevators, a nice lobby, and laundry. So keep that in mind when we're comparing the last apartment to this apartment. Let's start over here at this end of the apartment. Now clearly this apartment isn't for someone who likes to cook a lot. A lot of people who live in this area do want to be close to work. So you're probably not cooking that much. But for what you do decide to cook, you've pretty much got everything that you need. You have a two burner cooktop and because you don't have a full oven here it takes advantage of having more prep space up here so usually an oven would come out this far and then you see in those kitchens there's literally this much counter space you might be wondering where's the refrigerator well just like the last apartment this is a mini fridge again you would definitely need to be someone who doesn't cook that much and doesn't need to store that much it is nice and clean but it is a smaller fridge what I do like about this is definitely a good amount of storage space. If you're one of those people who microwave things and eat them really quickly, you definitely have enough space to store all of your ramen. And then down here, they have a shelf and then you can keep your microwave here. The closet space is definitely pretty decent and I'm glad that they put two shelves up there. I'm sure if you pack it in, it, it could work. We finished the kitchen. Now it's time for us to collectively decide how we would set up this space. I think for me, this is definitely not a space where I could put a breakfast bar. I think I would have to forego that and just do the bed. The bed is obviously top priority and I would have to get some sort of work surface or table because I don't like to work in the bed. I know a lot of you guys say to loft beds or to get one of those beds that go up and down. I forget the name, I'm gonna put it on the screen. I'm having a brain fart right now. That a lot of landlords do not allow um, they don't allow water beds. They don't allow to, you to attach anything to the wall. Keeping in mind that we can't attach anything to the wall, but we can lift it up some way. Let's figure out what we would do here. Because the bathroom is there and the kitchen is there and the door is there, this is literally the only space that you would have to put your bed. I'm standing at the edge of the kitchen, so this is the amount of floor space that you have to work with. Your bed, if you did it lengthwise, so you can have some walking room to get to the bathroom, it would come out to about right here. And then that's how much space you have between the bed and the kitchen. Unlike the 70 square foot unit, you don't have to actually leave your apartment to go to the bathroom. And this is actually a really beautiful bathroom. You can't change the size of the apartment, but I love it when the landlords actually upkeep the apartments once people move out. The upkeep and cleanliness of the bathroom are really important to me. I guess you guys are waiting to hear the price, right? Sometimes I get nervous to tell you guys the price because I know you're gonna be on your keys going crazy. But the price of this apartment is $1,900. You do get one month free. I think that works out to about $1,740. I will put that on the screen right here. For the size, it's definitely bigger than 70 square feet. It's almost double that. So for the main space where you'd be living, but that does include the kitchen, you're looking at about 125 square feet. Once you include the bathroom and the closet, you're looking at about 185 square feet. So it's bigger than 70 square feet, but it's still less than 200 square feet. I wanna know if you guys could live in a space like this. The last thing I wanna show you guys is actually right outside this window. Now, it wasn't on the listing. 
Um, I'm pretty sure, possibly, maybe, it's not actually an amenity of this apartment, but since we're here, I'ma show it to you. I see the apartment next door has outdoor patio furniture, um, but if the window opens, right? Stay with me. And you can get your foot out there, then isn't it outdoor space for you? Isn't this so nice? Now don't say, Naisha told you this is part of the apartment. I'm just showing you that it's here. The rest is on you. Before we continue, I wanna thank Tula for sponsoring this video and I'm gonna give you guys a quick updated skincare routine that I've been doing for the past couple of months. Even though the winter is finally over, I have been feeling like my under eyes have been pretty dry. So I did pick up a set of the cooling and brightening eye masks. They come individually packed, so you can take them out as you need them. Now that my eyes are fully hydrated, it's time to hydrate the skin. As you can see, I definitely do have hyperpigmentation. Unlike other acne medications that don't work in the light, this has salicylic acid, so it's still working in the daytime. And that's something I really like about Tula. Their focus is on having healthy, clean skin, and their messaging isn't so much about having perfect skin. We're now going back to the eyes, and this is the Glow and Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. And you don't have to feel worried about putting this on on a sensitive area like your eyes because Tula products are cruelty-free and never tested on animals. Last but not least, don't forget to use your sunscreen. I was definitely one of those people who didn't use sunscreen. So I don't know how they did it, but once you put it on and smooth it into the skin, it is completely seamless with no color. Tula is a doctor founded clean and effective skincare and wellness brand where 100% of the products are formulated with probiotic extracts and superfoods. So that completes my new spring summer skincare routine. If you're interested in any of these products, you can go to Tula.com and use my code Niasia for 15% off. And if you spend $40 or more, you're also gonna receive free shipping. And I don't know anyone who doesn't like free shipping. One block I've already eaten almost all of my chocolate bars. I'm not saying I have a chocolate obsession, but I'm not saying I don't have a chocolate obsession. But while I finish this, I want to give you guys time to look at the living room. <laughs> oh, in case I didn't tell you, this is the living room. This is your living room, your kitchen, your dining room, your living space. We are actually in a two bedroom. Now, I know a lot of times we feature tiny apartments and they're usually studios, but I wanted to mix it up on you guys and show you guys a two bedroom that I believe is small for a two bedroom. Now, we are in the East Village Union Square and we're on 14th Street directly. So as far as location, this is the place that a lot of people wanna be. This is the actual full living space that you have. There are two bedrooms in the back. So this is the common space that the two people who live here would share. You can't really fit a couch in this area. If you were to put a sofa here, it would come out to about here, obviously like a one or two seater. And then you would have to scoot this way to be able to walk past. So this is really just a hallway. You can obviously fit a dining table here or you could fit it in the kitchen as well. Or you could have a desk out here because you wouldn't be able to fit a desk in the bedrooms as I'm going to show you. The kitchen for the East Village is actually a pretty good size. There are only two cabinets on the wall. So if it were me, I would spend a little extra money and get two extra cabinets. Or on this side, you can definitely put some open shelving up here, or you can kind of make a pantry, get a slim Ikea Pax wardrobe kind of system that has drawers and shelves if you wanted to keep it nice and compact. This is the living area, and this is the only closet in this apartment. So two people with two bedrooms literally have only this closet to share. That means clothes, that means pantry, toiletries, supplies, suitcases. This is the only closet. You have a standard bathroom. If you like to take baths, you definitely could do that here. So your kitchen is there, your one closet is here, your bathroom is here, and then your two bedrooms are back here. So although you have two separate bedrooms, the bedrooms only fit a bed. I mean, I feel like I could, I have pretty long arms, but I feel like 
I can almost touch from end to end. So you would just be able to fit a twin size bed. And as you can see, there's no closet. So once you fit in that twin size bed, anything else that you need in either of these bedrooms, you're gonna have to go up with storage. You're gonna have to outfit some cabinets, some shelves. You're gonna have to really get creative. If you do need a lot of direct natural light, then this would actually be a good option. That is one of the things that has going for it other than location is that it does get a lot of natural light. Now we're in the second bedroom. You can see that the previous tenant, because there is no storage space, has added some shelves. And this is a system where you can add multiple shelving so you can have different racks going up but I would need to go up even further than that. That was it for this one, except for the price. The price is $29.99. I forget if I say it really quickly, you guys would just skip over that. But the price is $29.99, so $3,000 for this apartment. So many people in the comments give suggestions to other people that if you just go further uptown, you get way more space. But I wanna show you guys that even uptown, the prices may not be as cheap as you think.